This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome to another episode of Hawaii Food and Farmer series where we meet with Hawaii's farmers, foodies, restaurants, politicians, all types of people that care about Hawaii's agricultural industry. I'm your host today, Matt Johnson, and as always, well not always, always, but I think every other Thursday, uh, you can find us here at 4 p.m. And you can also uh, check into the conversation by tweeting at, at thinktechhi. And you can actually also call in too if you're interested. So we have a hotline, 808-374-2014. Uh, We'd love to hear from you. Uh, so we have a lot to talk about today because we have a great, fantastic guest with us today. We have a good friend of mine, Donna Ching, who's with the Pacific Center for Collaboration, um, but also wearing another hat, as you always are. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to be talking about the upcoming Hawaii Ag Conference, which is uh, in less than two weeks, August 29th through the 30th. So Donna, thank you so much for being here. Happy to be here, Matt. I know I've been uh, quasi harassing you for a while now yeah. about coming on to the show right. and uh, we were in a meeting earlier today so I, I literally grabbed you and, <laughs> yeah, right. and brought you with me so thank you so much no problem um so we have a lot to talk about but why don't we start off with the hawaii ag conference okay. um what is that all about okay uh, you the reason i know matt is because he's a member of uh, one of the classes of the Ag Leadership Program, mm -hmm. which is sponsored by the uh, Ag Leadership Foundation of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And one of the things the foundation does is provide leadership programs for our uh, agricultural and rural leaders, mm -hmm. but we also um, have had programs with um, youth. Mm -hmm. But the other thing that we did was every other year we used to host an Ag Conference yeah. for the state. Yeah. And it's very difficult, Matt will know because he's on the committee, to do that conference because it takes, you know, thousands probably of hours of volunteer time. So last year when the foundation, I facilitated the foundation in our strategic planning, mm -hmm. we invited 10 stakeholders from um, the sector, the ag sector, and the number one thing they said was, we need another ag conference. Yeah. It's been five years. We wow. need another ag conference. Whereas typically in the past, it's been every, every other, other year. Every other year, right. But it's so expensive right. and it takes lots of volunteer lot of hours. So um, we got a huge um, support from the Department of Ag hmm. because Scott Enright uh, really felt that the, the sector did need an opportunity to get together and. He's a director, chairperson of, of the uh, Department Hawaii of Department of Agriculture. Yes. And he put his money where his mouth was. Mm -hmm. So once he did that, the foundation, the board felt that it was a, a good thing to just to put this conference together. But we've been real lucky, as you know, we've had lots of great sponsors who have really made this um, a, a very successful undertaking. At this point in time, two weeks out, we're feeling pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we just had our meeting this morning. Yeah. It was actually kind of relaxed, it which was. is surprising. I've never been involved in a, a relaxed planning meeting before. Two weeks before. out, right, right. 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 Um, so let's talk a little bit about the conference. Um, so it's Hawaii Ag Conference. So what can, like, who's going to be attending? What are we going to be talking about? Why, if somebody is just hearing about it for the first time, why may they be interested and why should they attend? Okay. We have, um, we, as you know, Matt, we've been, <laughs> the committee has been at this for one year. Yeah. We meet every other week for a half day. And so we really, during that time, really tried to hash out what were the issues that we had to talk about. And so I think the number one thing is that the overall theme is, you know, you can make a difference. And under that, that umbrella theme, we have three threads, really. The first one is really about um, the economic um, benefit of having agriculture, you know, and how can we make that <coughs> agriculture more successful? That's the first. The second one is the role that agriculture plays in the community. Farmers <coughs> and agriculture play in, in rural communities. And the third one is really about our stewardship of the land. That's the third thread. And so uh, we send out RFPs, and we got people to... Um, 
decide what thread they really want it to be under. Mm -hmm. And so we put together a great program that represents all three of them, I think. So, we're, um, so we have the website, uh, hiagconference.org, which I believe has been uh, going across the screen there. Uh -huh. um, how about, um, so we have the different threads, different conversations, so, so very important things. I mean, we're talking right. about the, the food and agriculture industry for Hawaii, and there's right. so many different things happening. Why, why do you think now is a good time for this? Or what, why now versus maybe a year or two years ago? Why is it even more relevant than ever? I, you know, I think that one of the big challenges we have in Hawaii is a, is a challenge of scale. Hmm. Um, the, we're so small that it's really difficult for us to get um, uh, to, to, to use scale to be able to do things. Mm -hmm. So the only way we can, we can create it is by collaborating with one another. Mm -hmm. And it's really difficult in people in their everyday lives, you know, they're, they're working hard on their farms or they're, you know, they're working as manufacturers. It's really hard to give them an, to, for them to have opportunities to interact with each other, mm -hmm. to see ways in which they can, can collaborate and, and really create synergy, mm -hmm. you know, create much more energy than they could do by themselves. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's what the, one of the main purposes of a conference is, I think, is to um, create those opportunities. But, you know, obviously the other thing is we're going to expose people in, on a lot of topics to uh, really current information that they need to know to be successful. You know, food safety, um, invasive species, all of these things we have to be up to speed about. Yeah. Because, you know, as you know, agri agriculture is so challenging as mm -hmm. a career. So, yeah. And so I guess, yeah, that's even more so, the, I guess, a challenge with a place like Hawaii, where the agriculture industry has changed from large mono crop uh, yes. plantation to these really small diversified family farms, whereas right. maybe a place like California or the Midwest where you have these larger um, farms that are more vertically integrated and have the resources, whereas a small farm here might be one acre, five acres, ten acres, right. um, has the challenges of trying to figure them all out by themselves. That's right. So and you and I were just talking before the show about the fact that uh, you're going to be um, host moderating a mm. session on co-ops mm -hmm. and um, food hubs. And that, that is a great mechanism to help farmers mm -hmm. because, you know, to be up to speed on everything, the, not only the food safety, but the marketing and, you know, transportation, all of that is very, very difficult. Yeah. And so, you know, if, if farmers can get into a situation where they actually can work with other farmers mm -hmm. or work with an organization that is responsible for helping them do all those things, yeah. I think that's a, a, a real benefit. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, and it's real exciting for me and I know for all of us just, you know, having the opportunity to network. Yes. Because right now I believe there's, what, over 500 registrants for the Close conference? Close to that, yeah. this is going to be one of the... You know, largest oh, the uh, largest that conference we've that we've ever had. Ever had, yes, without doubt. I mean, when we were talking about 400 initially, I thought <laughs> yeah. that's a stretch, and now we're talking about 500. Yeah, yeah. and we're yeah. still a week and a half out. Uh, we so. are, and we know other people are going to be registering. So yes. Yeah. We're setting up the, the separate room right now, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. The overflow room. The overflow room, exciting. right? Exciting. Yeah. So I mean, it's hard to imagine that it could be even more exciting, but then we have a pretty amazing set of keynote speakers. Yes. You want to talk a little bit about yeah. who that is? We decided that instead of having one keynote, because we had three tracks or threads, that we would invite three keynote speakers. So we have, um, to represent the economic aspects of farming, mm -hmm. we have somebody from the mainland mm -hmm. who wrote a book and um, uh, called The Lean Farm, and mm -hmm. one of our participants had read the book and, tr and used some of his techniques and saw great benefit in it. Mm -hmm. And so the, th the good thing about him is he runs a very small farm. I think yeah. it's just one or two acres, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And he actually shrank his farm and became more productive, yeah. right? So we think this is perfect for our farmers because so many of them just have small operations. Right. So he's talking about, you know, the um, how to increase the, your profits and, and be more efficient. 
So that's one one of them. And then he's also doing a workshop too. Yeah, yes, on the, on the second, second day, day. right? Yeah. And we think that's going to be really useful for mm -hmm. a lot of our people. And we're going to sell this book. Oh, cool. Um, and then the second person um, looking at the uh, issue of the AINA mm -hmm. is um, President um, Hilda Jaime mm -hmm. from uh, the Marshall Islands, yep. Republican Marshall Islands. And she has a situation where actually smaller islands than ours and how to do agriculture sustainably, number one, but also the whole issue of um, how can she make sure that agriculture is perpetuated in the future? Yeah. You know, how can they steward the land so that's possible? Yeah. So, she, and because they're they're island nation, mm -hmm. lots of um, a commonality with Hawaii. Yeah. So we thought she would be great. And then finally, of course, um, we asked Nainoa Thompson mm. because he's going to be talking about the whole issue of agriculture in the community. We, and he's the president of the Pacific Voyaging. Yes. And just came back from the Malama Honua. Yeah, yeah. And so we hope he's, he's going to bring back messages that are going to enable, uh, that he can share during his part of the, the keynotes about how we can, you know, support and better integrate farms into our community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. We are re unfortunately, because we have three of them, they, um, they're going to only speak for 20 minutes each. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of unusual. But yeah. anyway, we're going to keep them to those times. Right, right. That's one of your responsibilities, <laughs> yeah, right? right? Make sure everybody stays on track. Right, right. So we can start on time with the session. So then what's also interesting too, like a lot of times when you have these kind of conferences, you know, people get very excited and, and we're having the conversations about where, where does this lead to after the conference? What are some of the, I guess, goals and intentions of, so we all come together, we have great keynote speakers, we have great uh, session topics that we're going to be going over. We're going to have over 500 people uh, within the agriculture community there together. So obviously it's just going to be a great uh, two days. But right. then what, what would you like to see or what do you think could happen afterwards? As you know, we have a very um, tenacious uh, member of our committee, Joey Char, who from the very <laughs> beginning said, the conference cannot only be about these two days. Mm -hmm. And so he really had um, advocated from the very beginning that we really should have people make commitments mm -hmm. that go beyond the conference mm -hmm. in terms of how they are going to help the sector move forward. Mm. And you know, in the beginning, we just kind of listened to him. But by the end of the whole year, we realized that that was a really good goal. Mm. And so we have set it up so that um, Kanu Hawaii is going to come in and... Um, so Kanu, Kanu Hawaii is a, a nonprofit mm -hmm. that, I guess, identifies different uh, I guess, ways that Hawaii could be better, whether yes. it's around sustainability, yes. Uh, so a lot with energy, right. uh, food supply. Mm -hmm. Wait, you're really good at this. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> We've been doing this 77 times. Yeah, right. <laughs> so Kanu is coming in, and they are going to either solicit on video or people can write individual commitments that they are going to make after the conference. Mm. Things like, I'm going to buy more local products. Mm -hmm. I'm going to you know, um, support my farmer by going to the farmer's mm -hmm. market. So we, we, they're going to do that. But what we have discovered in planning the conference is that, in your session, for example, mm. is that... The co-ops and, and food hub session. And food hub session. When, when your people got together to, to organize, mm -hmm. they realized that, you know, this is a good idea coming and talking about things because you have some real common challenges. Yeah. And as Kevin in your group said, you know, everybody doesn't have to make the same mistakes we did. Mm -hmm. You know, we can, we should actually get together yeah. and, and, and work with each other so that people can learn from one another, mm -hmm. you know. And so what we're hoping is that um, every session, we're asking our moderators at the end to ask people if they would like to continue the conversation in some way after the conference. Mm -hmm. And so we are going to collect the names of people who want to do that. And our responsibility will be to make sure that we send out back to the group the names of everybody who, who wanted to be in that committee cool. so they can get together and um, hopefully 
start working on some of these issues. Yeah. I mean, we already have two people who are really tackling challenging problems. One is housing, and one is um, land. And they want to do something beyond that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but sorry to have to, to kind of stop our train of thought there, but unfortunately okay. we have to go to a quick one minute break. Okay. So hold that thought. Okay. We're going to come back and talk a little more about Ag Leadership Foundation and then also about Donna Ching. Okay. Okay. We'll be right back. Thank you. Aloha, welcome to Hawaii. This is Prince Dykes, your host of the Prince of Investing, coming to you guys each and every Tuesday at 11 a.m. right here on Think Tech Hawaii. Don't forget to come by and check out some of the great information on stocks, investings, your money, all the other great stuff, and I'll be your host. See you Tuesday. Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m. and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you. And we're back to Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. I'm your host, Matt Johnson, where we talk to Hawaii's farmers, foodies, restaurants, politicians, all kinds of cool people that are interested in Hawaii's agriculture industry. And we are talking today to Donna Ching, PhD, uh, with Pacific Center for Collaboration. And we're talking about the upcoming Hawaii Ag Conference, which is going to be at the Hawaii Convention Center August 29th through the 30th. As you can see below, there is a website where you can go and get more information and also register. So we just talked about how awesome this conference is. Uh, I just get more and more excited now that we're, we're talking about it. That's just kind of the whole thing. Um, but let's talk a little bit about um, Ag Leadership Foundation of Hawaii, which is the organization that is hosting and putting on the conference. Okay. Um, talk about that, but also your involvement with the foundation. Okay. Back in 1982, obviously, um, as you said earlier, uh, a lot of the pineapple and sugarcane plantations were going out of business. And the, some very um, thoughtful leaders, uh, agricultural leaders on the Big Island, Hawaii Island, said that, you know, we're going to have a vacuum because the pineapple and sugar industries actually train their own leaders. Mm -hmm. So they decided to go to the county and they got $25,000 to start a leadership program. Well, they used it to leverage, um, they leveraged it by going to the Kellogg Foundation, which mm -hmm. at that time was going around the country and, and sponsoring, uh, setting up these leadership programs across the nation. Right now, there are 29 of them. The Agricultural Leadership Foundations. The, the, yes, well, di they're different. Uh, names for them okay. because some are natural resources, you know, mm -hmm. so they're, mm -hmm. but they have agriculture as a common core. Mm. And so uh, they, so they got money from the foundation, the Kellogg Foundation, and they started with the first two classes. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but the commitment from, that they had to make to Kellogg was that they were going to make sure that the program was sustainable beyond the Kellogg Fund. Mm. So I entered um, with class three when the funds were almost gone. <laughs> and for the first time, we charged the tuition. Yeah. Um, but uh, I work with the foundation as a faculty member uh, of leadership at, in the College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources. My dean said, maybe you should run this program. And I went and talked to Jane Yamashiro, and she made me believe that to me my life's work. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> 25 years later and 11 classes, um, we, um, we're now on class, we just finished class 14 or 15. I think 15. 15 I think yeah. I was with class 13. 13, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I can't remember because I only went to 13. <laughs> um, but we had two more afterwards. So um, we, 
the foundation that now has been around for 35 years, mm -hmm. and we've trained well over 100 leaders. Mm -hmm. And they're out in the community and um, providing leadership for their commodity organizations, mm -hmm. their communities, their, um, some of them have gone into the legislature. Mm -hmm. So we find them in many, many different arenas. Mm -hmm. Most many of the members of our planning committee are um, ag leaders, mm -hmm. and so uh, I feel that that's you know a great return for the foundation that the leaders really have turned around and you know volunteered their time to this mm -hmm. kind of endeavor because this is a the conference is something that helps the whole sector, yeah. you know, yeah. and it's beyond just your own narrow self interest, right? right yeah, right. yeah. So my responsibility has always been to, um, I, I did a lot of the leadership components, but probably the thing I'm most known for is um, facilitation training as well as strategic planning training. Okay. Because I think those are two critical needs that every leader has, or needs to be successful. Yeah. You know, be able to facilitate groups and um, be able to plan strategically. Well, so that's a great segue into you talking a little bit about, so when you say leadership training, mm -hmm. uh, that can mean a whole variety of different things. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned uh, facilitation, strategic planning, mm -hmm. but can you talk a little bit more about what is the structure? Uh, I know it's definitely changed throughout Change. the years, yes. but uh, where there's the, the classes, but then also the field trips. Right. Can you talk a little bit about that structure? Right now, because I haven't been involved with the last two classes, mm -hmm. Uh, we have another person who's a program director, and that's Pauline Tabato. Um, we, what we, we do is we have a, a number, so seven to eight four-day seminars. Mm -hmm. And these seminars are all over the state, mm -hmm. okay? So uh, we try to expose the class to actual in-classroom work where we're doing leadership training, et cetera. But also, I think one of the really big benefits of the program is the field trips, mm -hmm. where they actually go and visit farms, they go and visit um, uh, manufacturing operations, mm -hmm. retail operations, they, they have a whole uh, session at the legislature. Mm -hmm. So they really are being exposed to a much wider um, perspective relative to what ag is about. Mm -hmm. And then the, um, the, you know, the, um, the, event that we have at the end of the program is a two-week trip to the mainland mm. because we really feel it's important for them to be exposed to the one week is spent in Washington DC mm -hmm. so really be exposed to the um, at the national and international level what things are happening in ag that really impact Hawaii mm -hmm. okay that we don't even think about you right. know and then the the other week is spent in a state that the class selects mm -hmm because we really want them to see what agriculture looks like in another state, yeah. you know, and, and so I think the class, um, the members of the class really gain a wealth of information from that kind of mm -hmm. um, perspective. Yeah. But I, I think you'll agree that sometimes the greatest things that they learn are from their own classmates mm -hmm. and the network they form yeah. as a result of this, you know, when you live with each other for two weeks or yeah. even four days, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. pretty intense. Yeah. And uh, you learn a lot about yourself, but you also learn about the operations of your colleagues, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, and yeah. can really uh, figure out how you can, those things that you learn can be applied to your own yeah. businesses. Yeah. yeah, I remember it was really interesting, and I think it was definitely deliberately planned this way where you're kind of picking and choosing different members of the cohort from a variety of different industries. Where yes. You'll have your, you know, typical rancher or farmer, then you'll have your nonprofit organization. There's typically your seed corn uh, company that is going to be represented. Yes. And then you usually have kind of like your... Some government people for government sometimes. Government people. And, and conservation uh, people. Conservation. I think we're getting some more people from media yeah. um, into mm -hmm. the trainings as well. Mm -hmm. So it's a really nice diversity mm -hmm. of, of that makes a cohort you know, clash a little bit, but yeah. really I think at the end, it's yeah. like you said, that, that journey together and people have that, may not agree on all the issues, That's but right. have that strong network that you can. 
relate to? Yeah, I think that um, the great thing about it is absolutely we don't get people who are all alike. So um, one of the things we're trying to help them do is be able to, in a very um, civil way, uh, deal with disputes, things that they don't, mm -hmm. you know, they, they have differences of opinion about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I think that's really important because we can see in our, our society today that um, that's really necessary. Yeah. Civility <laughs> and respect yeah. for others. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, I think we learn that when we, when we actually live with each other. I think that's a critical part of the program, yeah. you yeah. know? Yeah. Well, that's fantastic, and it's great that Ag Leadership Foundation is, is taking the lead on putting together this conference. Right. So that's fantastic. So we don't have much time left. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure we have time to talk about Donna Ching, mm -hmm. PhD. So give us a little background, like how did you start your career, and then how did you transition into working in agriculture? Okay. So the dean said to me, at that time I was the, the dean of our college, Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources, said, you know, you're a leadership person, so you should go and be the, the um, coordinator of that leadership program. So that's how it happened. And, okay. you know, I, I'm not, my husband is a horticulturalist, but I'm, as he says, there are many parts of my yard I've never been in. So I'm not exactly <laughs> somebody with a green thumb by uh -huh. any stretch of the imagination. But, um, but I, you know, we're giving them the kind of people skills that they need, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to be successful. Mm -hmm. So, um, I did have those, and I, you know, I could, because I was in the college, I had access to a lot of people who could help me set up tours and mm -hmm. do that. And, I, and the great thing is that people, when they knew we were part of the program, a lot of people were really willing to host us, yeah. you know? Yeah, so yeah. we got to see things. I know in my 25 years, I got to see things, my husband used to say that, I got to see things that even our dean had never seen yeah, before, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it, it was really a wonderful experience. Cool. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's awesome. And unfortunately, we're running out of time. OK. Um, and so maybe uh, after the conference, yes. and we've had some time to relax and settle down, maybe uh, we could do a follow-up conversation with you and maybe bring on someone else from Ag Leadership Foundation oh, to talk more good. about it. Because uh -huh. it's definitely an organization I think is not really well known, yes. but it's doing uh, a lot of great things for Hawaii's agriculture. So Donna, thank you so much for being thank on the you. show. And uh, that's it for this week's show, Hawaii Food and Farmers Series. And we'll see you in two weeks, uh, Thursday at 4 p.m. Aloha. <laughs>